Well, hello, everyone. I'm so glad that you joined us, and I am sitting beside Melissa Sanchuk. Can you make her welcome? Just send her up some hearts. I have to tell you, before I click that going on button, uh, tell me what you were doing, what you remember in childbirth. Go ahead. <laughs> she was releasing any anxious feeling, and sometimes we just got to go, Ooh! can you do that? Uh, okay, you got to work with me. I Melissa am. has some extra talents. She's very, I mean, she could be a stand up comedian. Um, and we all know that, but we're going to learn about her story today. So, the name of our devotion is called It's Who I Am. So, if we say it's who I am, that means we've done something long enough to where we feel like you can't change it now. It's just who I am. And so, one of the things that she does, and she, um, she may surprise you here, but I'm going to do something with her that's unique, okay? Are you ready? You ready for the eye thing? <laughs> okay, right. she can make one of her eyes turn in where the other one stays the same. Can you do that? We're loosening her up today. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, do, the, I'll do the evil eye if you do it with me. Okay, ready? <laughs> this is what Rick does not want to see ever is the evil eye. So little, little <laughs> hidden talents. But more than that, the girl is able to, she's able to laugh, you know, when, when even in the midst of turmoil. In the midst of trouble, she's found her humor, and sometimes the humor can just mask it, what's going on deeper within us, right? So if I say, who, who am I, it can change. Like, uh, changing the order of this, of this phrase can be from who am I to who I am. So but we want to talk about when you didn't know who you were, and you, um, you dealt with things as a child that you felt made up who you were until God began to let you know who you were. So, um, first of all, I heard you were lead poisoning. You had you got lead poisoning as a child. So tell us mm -hmm. about that. I got lead paint poisoning. Can when you I talk was really younger. loud? I got lead paint poisoning when I was younger, and it affected you know how I learned and. You felt like in school, like you couldn't comprehend, or you know, like um, did you feel left behind, kind of? Well, I was left behind. I just I was. Nobody wanted to, nobody could teach me, really, at a certain, like, once middle school came, nobody could teach me anything. It's just, I would hear it, and I would try to learn, and I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't, and it got to the point where, it got to the point where I, um, you're bullied, right? Oh, yeah. I Tell me bullied. how you were bullied. Um, just picked on me nonstop. They just, you know, said that you couldn't, you know, couldn't do this or that. No, and there well, was it wasn't just the it wasn't just the kids. It was the like, OK, so I would I would raise my hand because at first I wanted to learn. You know, yeah. <laughs> everybody wants to know things. Yes. So I would, you know, I would raise my hand because I didn't understand how right? she explained it or if he I don't even remember at this point. Um, but and. Uh, it just got such to, to be such a habit where they would say, I just explained it. And this happened for years into wow, middle school okay. till I just gave up. And then kids would pickle me even more. That's one of the reasons I gave up is because, you know, the more I would ask and show people that I wasn't getting it, the more that they would pick on me. Wow. And, yeah. And so uh, one, there was a word that still, I mean, recently, guys, we've just released... The past and the hurts and and I have to can I tell you about the three we'll tell you about the 316 yeah. afterwards uh, but something special happened today that I want to share with you so please stay tuned so there was something you recalled a lot that and you you believed it about yourself it's the s word yeah stupid okay can you tell them what you were stupid so we renounced it we, we identified it and then we can't have any more power over you and so you felt like you were stupid yeah and it's so far from the truth. Guys, you'll find out what God showed her uh, and showed her the gifts and the talents that has come forth. So I want to, right off the bat, we want to get some words. Psalms 139 and 14 says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. <laughs> your soul knows that now very well. Mm -hmm. But then it didn't know it. And so you were, you were looking for love, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Did you find yourself looking for love in the wrong places at times like where they couldn't <laughs> yeah usually <laughs> <laughs> and, 
but they couldn't, they couldn't give you what they didn't have, and so you felt used. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So I want to point out, wonderfully, mer wonderfully means to put a difference between you. In other words, there's no one like you. Right. It's who you are. It's who's he's, who he's called you to be. Again, no one has the same fingerprints. We're all uniquely designed, and there's no one in the world like you, even if you're twins. You knew that, right? right? Yeah. That there's, there's still a difference, a difference in fingerprints mm -hmm. um, with the twins, and it's because he has a... Uh, there's a unique, you're new, un, uniquely designed, um, even when you can't say it right, like me, <laughs> you're, you are designed for him. And he said, my son knows this very well. So tell me about, um, we're going to jump forward. When you got married, you had a son. Mm, I wasn't married. Okay. All right. Well, that's okay. Go ahead. We're, we're keeping it real. Um, you, you, okay. You lost your son, mm -hmm. right? At how many? He nine weeks? Nine days old. Oh, nine days old. And so God began to show you, he, I mean, you, it was obviously very devastating, mm -hmm. and, but you explained that you had a vision. Can you share that? Um, yeah, I was, I was, you can hold do on, it. hold okay. on, <laughs> I got this, <laughs> all right, so I was, I remember I was sitting in my mom's living room and it was right after the funeral. And then I was, I was just praying in my head, and I was crying, and I was praying in my head, and I was just like, you know, I was wanting, I was wanting God to explain to me why, you know yes. what I mean? I was pretty young, I was 18, and I was wanting God to explain to me why yes. I didn't, I didn't get it, and, and then I just, with, I, I just saw hands, and my yes. eyes were open. Yes. when I saw it. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't see anything else. I just saw hands and I saw my son. Wow. And I couldn't. Saw and, God holding your son, right? Yeah. And from that moment on, it didn't take away the pain of losing him, but it, <laughs> it helped you to I know. I did this and it didn't work. <laughs> no, God is, listen, he's helping you right now, even as we speak. And, you know, I just knew I just knew, you know, he was with God. He was with God. He was with God. I mean, who wouldn't rather be with God than here? So he was so in the best place. That helped you, but the fact that you felt you weren't smart carried with you throughout your life oh, yeah. until God made it very plain to you just how, that, that it's him through you. When we take the focus off of us, right? He shows us what he can do through us. So you had five kids and you still didn't feel smart enough to get a job. And... I love this part. You start crying out loud to God. You were tired of the years of, be, of, of being felt uh, like you were stupid or uh, being bullied. And like, you know, you kept things that would happen. It's like, why God? Why is this happening to me? But your perception changed. So you began to cry out to God. And can you tell us about that and what you saw? I just, um, I always believed, I always believed in God. Um, I didn't always follow, which is how I ended up with a kid, not married, and I was just like, you know, God, I, I went to Sunday school, I went to church, and I could never follow any of that. I, like, I'd hear it, and I knew the basics, you know, don't steal and all that. You and couldn't I knew, understand, really? I, I really couldn't understand. I couldn't grasp a lot of it. Okay. Um, and then one day, I was just like, I was crying, my kids were all asleep, and I was like, God, if you're, you know, if, if... Well, I knew he was real. I just always had faith that you he was real. You needed a sign of some sort. I didn't, well, I just wanted to understand. I wanted, yes. I wanted to understand his word. I wanted to be able to open the word. And, and then finally, I just opened it to Job in the middle of this prayer. And I started what happened? Read, I started read. I just read the rest of Job halfway through. And then it was, it, I got it all. I understood wow. it all. And it came alive to you, it didn't did. it? It is, and it was in the middle of the night, and I was like, I was like, all right. So I had to go back to the beginning, and that was the first book I read. In that, that was the first book I read in the Bible, and then the Bible is the first book I ever read. Wow. Well, you know what, Job? When she turned to Job, the first or the first book that you turned to was Job. But think about what Job had gone yes. through. He had gone through everything. It, and just was questioning God too. Like, yeah. God, why is this happening to me? And so, but you were able to understand it. It's like a light just it came was, on. It was the perfect book in that moment of yes. my life. So you said you became so hungry for more. I think that's I beautiful. Would, yeah, just keep reading and reading and reading. And the thing is that you, that you described yourself as what? A blank 
A blank canvas. A blank canvas, and she's not man-made. But God began to teach you, right? Yes. Through his word. I think it's beautiful. So 1 Peter 2 and 10 says, once you had no identity as a people, and you didn't feel like you, you were like, who am I? You know, like, because yeah. uh, you, you, you felt like you were stupid because you believed what was spoken over you, yeah. and it was a lie from the pit of hell. And it says, now you are God's people. Once you receive no mercy, come on, you were bullied. Now you have received God's mercy. I think that is beautiful. And it wasn't until your heavenly father identified you um, because man didn't teach you. God taught you the word and he gave you the understanding. I think Mm -hmm. it's just beautiful. So because man didn't teach you, it had to come from God, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And so I think this this is interesting because, you know, she's written a book, guys. Listen at this. She has written a book. It's called Simply from the Heart. You know, uh, when she felt like she couldn't get it here, like the, the head knowledge, but God gave her the heart knowledge, and she wrote a book, and it's beautiful po- uh, poetry, and then you've got, it's like a uh, devotion book. But you've got a passage, a, a, a book in here, or a poem that I love. It says, Who Am I? And I'm just going to read you the first couple lines. I am a, I'm a woman. Can you say that? I'm a daughter. I am a mother and a wife. I am many things. Do I ask God, who am I? So you went to that place of all the things that you were, but then you said, God, who am I? And he's beginning to show you Mm -hmm. who you really are. And he shows you this, that it doesn't matter how men, what men think of you. Look what I think of you. And I've got a purpose and a uh, design for you that you're going to write a book. And it's a beautiful, listen, this girl has depth to her. And because you held up, you held in so much. And she's got a depth, you know, of the word because it, she really just said, God, here I am. And she was a blank canvas. And that's what we have to do. We have to say, God, here I am. You know, as that blank canvas, just make my life, write my story. I think it's wonderful. First John 3 and 1 says, see how very much our father loves us for he calls us his children. And that is what we are. That's who I am. Come on. Can you say that? That's who I am. It's who I am. But the people who belong to this world, they don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. When they know him, then they recognize who you are. And it, it would cause us to think or have a different perception, doesn't it? Ephesians 1, 4 through 6 says, Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. So if we ask ourselves, who are we? Can I tell you who you are? If you've accepted him into your life, who are we? Can you tell them who they are? They're a child of God. You're a child of the living God. God designed you for his purpose. So it's not just this. It's not just who I am. It's who I am. It becomes, it's not just who I am, but it's here I am. Can you say that? Here I am. And just like Isaiah 6 and 8 says, Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. And you know what? This is Melissa. This picture behind us, of course, is a mountain. And so, Melissa, you came just recently, and you you wanted to walk in your purpose, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And so it's like um, Caleb said, give me my mountain. Your mountain is your purpose. So I want you to say to them from your heart, and this is going to be tender for you, but you want with all your heart for God to use you for his purpose and for his glory. Can you, can you express to them your heart of hearts of what you want to do? Yes, you've written a book and it's beautiful, but tell me, tell me what is in your heart right now. Can you do that? What is in my heart right now is what is in my heart right now is that I just want, I'm not totally sure what it is, but I just want to do whatever I want. I just want to do God's will in my life. I, when, when I'm doing what God tells me to do, that is the, literally the only time I feel right and, (laughs) and, and proper and normal and not miserable and I just want to do whatever it is God has for me, and I want God to equip me to do it, <laughs> which I'm sure he will. And he is. Remember, he doesn't call the equipped. He That's equips right. the called. And so she's come to that place uh, knowing, understanding what God can do through her, through writing this book, because she said, I'm a blank canvas. I'm empty pages. So just feel the pages. And that's what he's done in your life. And I think it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And she said, I'm going to take that mountain 
because it's the purpose that God has placed in her life. Remember, but when you're climbing your mountain in life to reach your summit, your summit is your purpose. We can't carry anybody on our back, right? right. We can't carry anybody or any baggage. We have to let it go and say, God, here I am. Send me. And it becomes who you are. And whose you are. Who's, whose are you? You're God's. You're his child. And I just think it's beautiful. When you feel like, you know, you have nothing else to give. That you have nothing. He's saying, just let me do it. Lay that blank page before me and just say, yes, here I am. <laughs> Send me. And let me tell you something. It becomes who you are. It becomes who you are. When people begin to look at you, they say, wow, that's a child of God. And they're doing what God's called them to do. So I just want to I want to lead you in prayer today and understand that he does love you. It doesn't matter what people have said about you or to you. Those are lies from the pit of hell. I say it again. It's lies. But what God is saying is, look, you're loved. You're enough. You belong to me. You are my child. And I have a purpose. I have a destiny for you. I think it's awesome. And so he's just saying, say yes. Here I am. Send me. So, Father, I thank you. God, we stand in awe and in wonder of your love, of how you've lavished your love on us God it goes beyond our comprehension so we just say thank you and God we lay our life before you and we say use it for your glory here we are Jesus send us and we will give you all the praise and all the glory that's due to your name in Jesus name amen Woo. Thank you for spending time with us. I've had a blast with Melissa. She's who she is. And when you see her in church Sunday, give her a big hug. This, this was a big deal, guys. Give her a big hug. And she's going to take her mountain. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. can, you say it, can you say it with confidence? I'm going to take my mountain. A little bit stronger? I'm going to row she's, to the edge, and I'm going to take my mountain. <laughs> that's right. And let God use her for your glory, for yes. his glory. Yes. Listen, yes. God loves you today. Don't forget that. We love you and have a great rest of your day, all right? Okay, bye-bye.